Hello, I'm Richard Ridge for Broadway Beat. The American Foundation for Equal Rights and Broadway Impact presented the one night only benefit reading of the new play Eight by Academy Award winner Dustin Lance Clark. The star studded evening was directed by two time Tony Award winner Joe Mantello. And we're here at the after party to celebrate this remarkable event. You know, I'm a student of Harvey Milk, and his big thing was outreach and education. Tell your story, tell your personal story, make it known who you are and what it is you're asking for. I think this play is a perfect example of that. And it's not, it's not just drama, and it's not just personal, and I hope we can continue to deepen it and tell the stories of these plaintiffs, because it's incredibly moving. But it's also true, and it's something that people can track and say, this is what you, who you are, this is what you're asking for, and in fact, I can watch this case move from the Ninth Circuit to the U.S. Supreme Court and follow its progress and hopefully get behind it. So I, I, I think it has a dramatic component, but it also has a real life practical component uh, that I think people hopefully can use it as a tool to educate and reach out and change minds and, and, and help us win full equality. It's, it's all transcript, but Lance did a great job of arranging it in a very organic way and in a very um, theatrical way. And then Joe did a great job directing us and, and making it and bringing it to the stage and not making it just a dry courtroom transcript. Um, and uh, it, it was just an honor to be a part of, truly. <laughs> And the real families were the real people you played with there tonight. Did you meet yes. them? Yes. I, I, I spoke to Jeff before I did the reading just to see where he was emotionally and, and what, the, what this whole process was like for him because I wanted to tell his story uh, as authentically as possible. And when you're up in front of a jury and everything, it's a little bit different than, uh, than uh, you know, in the rehearsal room. So I wanted to know exactly where he was. As a journalist, um, this issue is not a political issue, it's not a partisan issue, it's a civil rights issue, it's a human rights issue. And um, bringing sort of the emotion to it that, that these actors are able to do and, ex and telling the story in a way that maybe as a journalist I wouldn't be able to. You know, sometimes we're sort of, um, our storytelling can be a little bit dry, frankly. And, and this was a unique opportunity to talk about this issue and, and express views about this issue in, in, a, in a different kind of way. And I, it was such an honor for me to be part of it. I was really excited just to be a part of something that is so significant in history, my history as a gay man, what we've all gone through as a nation. But really personally, I've been with my partner Monty, husband now, I should say. Congrats. What? Um, it's so weird, yeah. We he he said I'm Sh I'm Cheyenne's husband tonight. I was like weird. Oh my god, it still feels weird, but great. And we actually didn't know if it would feel different for after being together so long. And just the word husband means a lot. And I didn't know if it would, but it's just a small little shift in the cosmos that we feel more connected. We feel it's so important. And this was a great, really beautiful night to be a part of. It's so important, you know that. It's and fascinating that they tried to stop getting the message out. You can't stop it. You just can't. It's not meant to be stopped. You know, evolution won't allow it to be stopped. So I just think it's sort of fantastic and hilarious and ironic. <laughs> and this is an issue for anybody in the theater. We got, I, I have no patience with this. You know, my best friends are gay. My, my mentors are gay. I, I got no patience for this crap. And this is a case that, as you see in the play, there's, not, there's, there's no argument against the civil rights aspect of this case. It will fall. It will fall across the country. The, que the, uh, the question is when. But on top of it being an issue that all these actors care about, that is exactly what actors should do which is bring, you know, put flesh and blood and humanity behind what would otherwise be a forgotten transcript. If I had a case that I was a lawyer, it was my, and I was, I was, I was, I was prosecuting, I would want my case to be shown to the people of this country. The idea that these, that the prosecution had to go and, 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 and had, had to go and hide from, the, from watching their case be tried, it's very interesting that they couldn't come up with one meaty argument 
and what and, and David Boyce is a brilliant lawyer when he says in the play you can't provide testimony that has no evidence that has no backup there were no expert witnesses because you couldn't find an expert witness uh, although still a large percentage of the country thinks that gay is evil and we have to we people have to get start getting familiar with the fact that their whole world is filled with gay people the fact that they don't know it and a lot of people aren't talking about it I mean, it, it, it allows them to keep this fantasy going that there's something different about gay people. They're just straight people and nobody, nobody gets that. I was very moved by the whole thing. I mean, the, to have the real plaintiffs, Chris and Sandy, out there uh, was really moving for me. And, and I'm just reminded of how powerful theater can be as a, as a, as a for social change, to shake people up and shake them out of their their prejudices or their they don't even know sometimes they have they have uh, prejudices they're just like that's the way they were raised and they don't really think about it and then they, they see something like this and they think what am I what these people are just like me they have they just want to be married and, and be loving and, and raise kids and have a family and and there's no reason they should be treated as, as second-class citizens so I think that tonight was a great um, example of how theater can really you know change people. You know, they really created this so that it can go into communities, into high school theaters, college theaters, uh, community centers, out into the country where people in theater groups can actually get together and read it and perform it and share something that uh, is for everybody. Uh, as opposed to the reverse of like, oh, we're going to start a small show and then bring it to Broadway. This is a little more genuinely theatrical in the, in the old sense of, of getting a show out there to people not expecting people have to come to New York to see it. I'm glad that they one night in New York and then give it to the grassroots of America because that's who needs to hear it and see it. And like we were saying earlier today, you must to preach to the choir but also teach the choir how to sing, you know? So it's for everybody, red, blue, no matter what state you live in, it's for everyone. I think that's what this should be about. It's always great when, when something on stage combines both thought and feeling, ideas and emotions. And that, this is a perfect example of that. It was a very emotional evening that just made your head explode with, with the ideas and the, and the irrefutability of these legal arguments. It's really exciting. I think that the organization behind this is phenomenal and it's the right thing to do is to put it out in communities all across the country, in schools, community theater groups, you know, and, so, and people will, I think, have a really uh, magnificent time playing it, as we all did, but I also think that people in all across America will respond to it. It's impossible not to. You know, it's a, it's a very visceral experience when you hear how th all of these ideas came together and coalesced in this one historic moment. The thing is, is that if there is a place in the red state where people are accepted for who they are, it's the local community theater. It does, it's, we're not talking gay or straight, we're talking all the misfits of all kinds. That's where you come to, to be a community with people and to perform and to have art. And you know, there are lots of local community theater stars and maybe if they're up there on that stage speaking Ted Olson's words, people in that community will stop for a moment and say, well you know what, I never thought of it like that. I never heard I it said like tonight. that. I had moments tonight where I was like, oh my gosh. And I could hear people going around us. I don't know if you heard that at all, but they'd be like, oh, right. People nodding, people whispering. There was one point where I was sitting next to um, Adam Umefer, Umefer, who is the uh, the head of the, or he's running the American Foundation for Equal Rights, and his mother was sitting next to him. And at the point where they were saying about how, you know, parents are, it's, oh, it was when you were talking. Rory was doing a speech about, you know. Talking while I was talking. No, no, no. You know, it's when Murray was doing the speech about, um, you know, my mother said you're going to go to hell and whatever, and Adam's mom put her hand on Adam's arm and just squeezed his arm. And I just thought, if nothing more than it's just sealing a relationship between a parent and a child to go, you know, I don't think that. Or if they do, they think, oh, I don't want to be that person to my kids. So it's just the beginning. If we can actually affect change with things like this, I mean, it's going to take a lot more than just this. Uh, but, you know, that's why I'm in this life. <laughs> Let's be real. Uh, you know, it's what I do, and I, I hope I do it in a way that's entertaining and not just, you know, forcing things upon people. It's not just medicine, uh, but it's entertaining. But, you know, certainly that's why I get involved in projects, because they move me. 
And because I think that in the end, you know, my mom, I, I came, it's the one thing that I got from Mormonism that I really think is beautiful. And it's the belief that we really truly have to be good to our fellow brothers and sisters in this life. We're all in it together. And it's hard for all of us. And if we can do anything in this life, let's try and make it a little bit easier on our brothers and sisters. And I learned that from the Mormon church. And I'm trying to put it to good use in the gay community. And so that's why I do things like this.